Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a great day. So I am, I have returned from the Outer Banks, but I did upload a video on the family channel while I was there. If you want to watch it with my buddy, Brendan Allen, who is a, a pro UFC fighter, and he came in to visit with uh, his corner guy. And I got kind of a, a pretty cool, like crash course training for UFC fighting. It was pretty unreal. Let's squeeze it, you ready? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's instant. I think you guys will definitely enjoy that video. So if you want to watch it, Mike and Gina on YouTube is the channel and you can find it pretty easily. But right now we have a huge box in the driveway and what's in that box are is our body panels for the OG Duramax. Now, if you are a, a new viewer, maybe you showed up when the Viper came here, uh, you might not know what the OG Duramax is. And you can probably tell from the idol, I bought a Duramax. <laughs> So hopefully everyone's excited about this, as excited as I am. I'm blown away, just the right one came up at the right time. Picture it like this, right now the ZR1 is the identity car on my channel. Like when you think of my channel, you think of this car and that's what it's known for. Well that was the OG Duramax back in the day and it really helped to grow my channel. I have a few videos with over a million views with that truck and I always said I would never sell it, but when I got my 2020 Duramax, I found myself not ever driving it. It sat here for a very long time. And then my buddy Bobby, my best friend, said, hey, if you're not using it, I would love to buy it. And if I ever wanna get rid of it, you would have it right back. So I really kind of like, I didn't really sell it. I kind of loaned it to him and he loaned me the money. And sadly, I ended up getting it back a lot faster than he or I had thought because somebody else, and it wasn't him, I see some people think it was him, ended up wrecking the truck. And he actually has the dash cam footage on his channel, so if you wanna uh, see that check it out but coming off the entrance ramp here to get on to uh what is it route 15 you're on your way to the capitol beltway here for the south bridge in harrisburg um, by the capital city mall uh you can see that the speedometer down at the bottom gains a little bit of speed but in kilometers that's not that significant starts to lose control it's too late now for any recovery the truck ended up getting in a pretty bad accident and uh, you know, then I was like, all right, well, I'll take it back and I was gonna rebuild it. I was actually leaving the driveway here and the wheel fell off, like snapped off. So thank God it happened at the end of my driveway and not on the highway. Long story short, uh, the truck has been sitting at PDW ever since. And recently I kind of got the, the urge to really rebuild it. Wrecked vehicle rebuilds are obviously not new on YouTube. So that's why I didn't want to rebuild it just as it was. I want to do something different and make it cooler. And I think you guys are going to love it. So that will be a dedicated video very soon. I'm sorry, that was a really long explanation for why that box is here, but I, I figured you kind of need the backstory. Well, we're back with another POV drive for two reasons. Number one, because I don't think anyone's gonna complain about a Viper POV drive. And number two, because someone was asking me about the gearing in the Viper and what it's like to drive, which is actually more interesting than you might think. And it's one of the things that makes the Viper such a good race car and racing car, especially when it's twin turbo. So the Viper has really, really long gears. One of the things that makes this car such a great twin turbo car because you're in that upper rpm range for so freaking long now that's what you want to think about when you're building a car a lot of people don't think about that type of thing when they're building a car they care about power and you know i was guilty of that as well back in the day all i cared about was the number on the graph i didn't care about anything else and then gradually over time i learned that there are two types of people in the world you got your dyno racers and your actual racers, and I slowly became a real racer. That's served me a lot better <laughs> than being a, a power number chaser. You know, it, it's a lot better just to race. I don't really care what the car makes, and that's why I don't often even talk about it. Yeah, a little bit of that is to keep people guessing because it's more fun, but really it's because I truly don't care. So when you're going with a, a twin turbo car and you got a car that's gonna be up in that RPM range for a very long time from, we'll say 4,500 and up, and you're covering like 60 or 70 miles per hour, well, you can be in your power band the entire time. Whereas if you have a car with short gears, like kind of like my ZR1, although they're not super short, but they're short, and it's an eight speed, this is a six, you're gonna want maybe a blower car, like the ZR1 is, because that power is gonna hit from lower, the torque is gonna come in harder from down low, 
and by the time it starts to fall on its face up top, you can shift again. And especially being an automatic, that doesn't really matter. You know, the shifting, you're not gonna lose a lot of time in between your shifts. So that's one thing about the Viper, and you can see as I'm driving it, like the gears are very long. When you're on back roads having a good time and just kinda, you know, we're not doing anything crazy, I'm not really speeding that, that badly, maybe a little bit, but uh, you're not gonna be out of third gear. Like, <laughs> unless you're really cruising, uh, you're not gonna be out of third and you got three more to go. This car is going to be a monster. I think you'll see that although I'm not really shooting for much more power than the Corvette, I'm only gonna, this car should only make about 200 more, maybe 300 more wheel. But I think you're gonna see because of factors like the gearing and the weight, uh, I think you're gonna see this car is going to be very fast. <laughs> a very, what can I say? A very fast car. Look at the way it grips, oh my god, it's insane. Quick drive in the Viper ACR, a little bit of info about the gearing, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Now on to the ZR1, because she is having a small issue. Now I brought this on myself, because I have talked about, how many times have I said, like, this car is so reliable, it's indestructible, it's never had a problem, and now it finally had its first problem but I can't really complain because I beat this car like it owes me money and it has never it really truly has never had a problem besides like some very small things that aren't even modification related like the fender cracked that got fixed under warranty my door popper button if you don't know uh, Corvettes are an electric door so when you want to get out you press this button here and that was broken but that got fixed under warranty and I think like the alternator went for whatever reason, probably because it was sitting for a while. But yeah, it's been remarkably reliable for how much I, I mean, you guys have seen, and if you haven't seen, if you're new on the channel, like I have raced, this car has 11,000 miles on it. And I think about 9,500 of those are like redlining racing the car. Like literally that, because I only drive it really to race it and I'll drive it like around town a little bit, but the miles are from the racing. It's been incredible and LMR did a fantastic job. But recently I noticed a little spot where she gets parked. I was out here looking at the car and I don't even really remember why I looked underneath it, but I saw a little dark spot and I kind of thought for a second like, well, that might be the condensation from the exhaust. That happens a lot like on the connectors and you'll get like really dirty like black water that drips out of it, but it was too far up. I knew I was like, man, that kind of looks like oil. So I moved the car and when I turned the car on, oil started really coming out. Now, the odd thing is it doesn't appear as though when it's parked, it doesn't continue leaking. Like when you turn the car on, it really leaks oil a lot. But then when you turn it off, it only leaks to a certain point and then it stops because, you know, obviously like the whole lid would, if it was leaking constantly, I was gone for seven days, the whole lid would be filled, but it's not. It seems to only leak when you actually have the car on. Not super worried about it. It starts up fine. It drives it, we'll drive it up onto the trailer. Um, so it can be, fit. I don't think it's like a big problem, luckily, but, we have this huge race at Pocono in like eight days. So I don't really have time to troubleshoot. Like it's, it's gotta be fixed right away. So we're taking it to CSP and I think they can handle Andrew's like, yeah, we'll get you in, you know, because it's, it's really kind of an emergency and um, they're going to look at it. I think it, like I said, it should be okay, but I'm going for 175 miles per hour. I can't <laughs> like, I'm going no wing this time and with the bell on and I got all these people lined up. So I, you know, I need the car to be 100% for sure. And I just, I hope it all works out. Like I said, I did bring this on myself for sure. LMR built one hell of a car. And uh, you know, I always said like, it's never had a problem, which is true. But if it does have one, you know, I wanna be honest and show you guys. And this is the first, this is literally the first issue I've ever had with the car, which is pretty incredible considering the power level it's always been at and the way I drive it. I can't see anything. Like it looks all dry in there. I don't know if you can really see on camera or not. But uh, everything looks good. Again, it turns on, it drives fine. Um, so I really don't know. All right, well, of course, it's pouring down rain right now, but I've got the trailer backed up to, uh, to the garage bay so that we minimize the distance we have to drive and we minimize how long the car has to be on. And that's about as good as I can get it. We'll fire it up here. I'll give you that cold start. If I'm being totally honest, it's really not that fun. Goes. Now normally I would let it warm up, but 
I don't want to do that, obviously. Windows up. And because it's wet, it will require a little bit of speed going up onto the trailer. Woo! A little nerve-wracking, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I think we're pretty good here, I think we're good. Oil pressure's still good, but we'll shut it down. Okay, and there we go. Sorry, that's gonna be the worst piece of footage in human history, but it's what we got. Not bad, not a bad deal for uh, 8 a.m. and pouring down rain. Here we are heading back to CSP and luckily today we are not racing a Tesla Plaid because man was that crap. I still can't get over that car. <laughs> get over it and I, I've been watching drag times and seeing the plaid against the remot remats remock whatever Navara and uh, I mean it, it's just crazy and, and to think that like my ZR1 actually looking back like before I raced the plaid I was like yeah I'm gonna win no problem then when I lost a bunch was dead even a couple and then like pulled ahead on the top end on a few just a little bit I was like, man, what is going on? Like, you know, what is wrong? But now after seeing all these videos, I kind of can't believe I even did that well. Like, I can't believe like I won a couple. I can't believe I hung even for a few and, I, and I'm not surprised that I lost a lot of them because that car is just insane. The more I watch it and the more data I see, the crazier it gets. But we're talking about good old fashioned V8 power today and hopefully uh, we're gonna meet up with Andrew and hopefully he's got some ideas as to what's going on because again, we do, we do not have time uh, for an issue. We've got Pocono coming up really soon and you know, I, this car is, is gonna be gone all out to potentially 175 miles per hour so we can't and I don't want you know oil on the track I don't want to endanger anyone else so we can't we literally can't afford to have any problems big thank you to Andrew and at CSP because without them I don't know what we would do I knew he'd bring the plaid I knew it you see there you go you see when you have listen to it that's really weird. <laughs> when you have an electric car, you don't have to worry about oil leaking out. See, that's one more advantage. I knew you'd bring the plaid. It's a daily. Just to rub it in. It's a daily, man. I, <laughs> I just take this thing everywhere. I take it, you know, my family. I take it when I like beat the shit of you. I just take oh, it. Oh, and you don't have to worry about oil leaking out of it either. Yeah, I, I that's something. Not. There's still oil in there somewhere. Is there? Yeah, and the, I guess for the electric. The motors, the like electric motors lubricant and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, if that starts leaking, that might be big <laughs> then trouble. you know you got a problem if your Tesla is <laughs> leaking oil. Um, but yeah, thank you for. Uh, I was just saying, thank you for for seeing me here. The doctor's gonna check it out. Um, I don't know. You think it's something small? It might be. I mean, it I, still runs my, fine. My suspicion is uh, that there's not enough crankcase ventilation, and it's just blown out the front seal. Okay. That's my suspicion, but we obviously we need to look it over and to fix it, we need our hands in it. So cool. Uh, if that's the case, and we usually set these cars up with like a Mighty Mouse catch can, but okay. I don't. I, I got to really look at your uh, your setup a little bit more. Gotcha. I was just unplugging stuff the last time and making sure that you didn't win the races. <laughs> Ripping out things. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually saying that too on the way. I was like, after watching like the drag times videos and all that, I, I don't know why I ever thought I was going to win. Like I went into it really confident. You know, I think- I don't know why. I think your best bet is actually at the racetrack. I think it's you think? from a dig on a prep surface. I think that's the- From a dig? Well, so- I don't know. So hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> I don't know about that. I got the white shorts to prove it. All right, here we go. Okay, so this thing, the it, like you have eight cylinders of freedom in here. Yes. But they, they take a little bit to get going. They're sequentially fired. So when I hit it, I'm immediately gone. Instant, yeah. I have that instant reaction, I'm gone. You've got to start feeding air and spark into every single one of these things. Well, and, and fuel, but it'll <laughs> it'll do that too. Uh, and you kind of start in this like s slow to fast thing. It's, it's very, very, very small, but it that's what has to happen. There's like this delay. So on the street, I'm gonna pull ahead pretty much every time 
no matter what, and then you got to play catch up. So yeah. you not only have to meet my speed, you have to exceed my speed. But at the track, you can time the bulbs properly, and we can have that even start. Maybe. And then, <laughs> like, we know that you have more high end, and I, I think that's... You're what, assuming what I'm a really good driver at the drag strip, and that doesn't happen to be the case, I don't think, so... I mean, only one way to find that. <laughs> Never seen a ZR1 be able to come off that type of trailer so easy. You, yeah. mean, you mean my super fancy trailer? Are you sure there's an engine in here? <laughs> One of the advantages of leaving your Corvette stock height, which everyone's like, oh, you should lower it. I know. Yeah. I never I don't think so. Mine. Exactly. Like ever. Because it's still practical if you don't. Yeah, my guys are always like, Andrew likes his Corvette to be like a four by four. I'm yeah. like, no, I just like, you know. People make fun of me, but guess what? I, I've never ruined a lip on, you know, a speed bump or anything. Well, there she is. Oil change required in the T-Rex. I was due at 8,200 and we are at 8650 putting the miles on the big girl t-rex tow mode now the different modes in the rex actually make a huge difference and uh running tow mode you can really feel it in the like it really you feel the suspension get a lot tighter i don't really notice much else but that you do notice and the zr1 is dropped off andrew's gonna enjoy his plaid thanks buddy enjoy the plaid <laughs> Yeah. See you, bud. Um, yeah, and we'll see what's going on with her. Again, I, I re I've said this multiple times, and maybe I'm trying to wish it into existence, but I, do I don't think it's a big issue. I think it's something small, and I think we'll get it. I think everything will be fine, but we shall see. I'll keep you guys updated on that. There you go. The old girl is dropped off at CSP, and again, I am very confident that we will have that car back very very soon and everything will be okay. But I did some quick math here. Actually, it wasn't quick. It took a long time to look back through and try to remember everything that I, you know, some of it wasn't on camera. But if you count just the racing, where I was racing another car, that car has done 127 races uh, against another car. And then if you factor in like all the pulls I've done, which I added up some that were on camera, but there's, I mean, every time I drive the car, I, fly, I, I at least do one pull every time I drive it. Um, so 127 races, and I would say at least 200 pulls, some on camera, some off, off camera. So we'll say 327 times I have raced or like been all out in that car and this is the first issue which i think is pretty cool and i might put that in the title i don't know like 300 races or something um but it's pretty unreal and again i don't think i keep saying this but i, I feel like it's not a big issue anyway hope hopefully it's not i'll keep you guys updated and uh, lots of other really cool updates coming soon including a huge update tomorrow that you guys are gonna i think you're gonna freak out at what's coming to the channel i think you're really gonna freak out so hope you enjoyed this one if you did give it a big thumbs up take care have a great night i'll see you in the next one.